Look at this. Oh man. No wonder I'm single. From the Bighorn Trailhead, Scott and I are going to find out how's the hike in Yellowstone National Park. Underway on a very short day in the backcountry, but quite a long day getting here and getting organized. So off to 1B1 campsite tonight, which is a couple of kilometers. So nothing wrong with that. I'll explain all the trip, the trip planning when we get to camp because uh, we're connecting a few trails here and I'll explain how all that works and the amazing plan that Scott has put together for us. Off we go. There is a day hike trail here, it's a loop and a campsite for car camping, which we're gonna utilize on this trip. But if you're going our direction to head toward Bighorn Pass, which is about 13 and a half kilometers from the car, Getting on that trail, you're gonna turn right. Hard to miss. One B one. What do you think, Scott? One B one, we made it. It's been a tough one. Really tough day. <laughs> We're gonna go up in there and uh, I'll show you camp and then I'll talk trip planning. View up the valley and the meadows from our campsite tonight, of course. You saw us come in from down there. And uh, 1B1. And there's Scott uh, doing a bear hang system pretty similar to what Brian DeLay does. Using both of our ropes and a little shot around camp. And it won't take long. It's a well-established camp, obviously. This one does not have a pit toilet. So practice leave no trace, of course. Learn how to poop in the woods. There's a video here on this channel about how to poop in the woods. Here it is. I'm just going to put it up on the screen now. Boom. From yours truly. <laughs> anyway, there's a shot. We've decided to set up down there. A little le uh, less rocky and kind of flat. I'm sure there are areas out here we could have tucked in as well, but we're pretty comfortable being down there. Kind of sheltered a little bit and also a little further away from the eating area. And the bear hang i think we've seen that some people have probably set up through there as well so now with regard to water you probably can't hear it on the video especially when i'm talking but there's a beautiful fast moving creek or stream down here very clear water you leave the campsite and you head that way and here's a quick video that i took while i was up there so looking back now toward camp turn around there's a bend a little bend in this creek and you can see where there's a lot of deep water to go down and get. So uh, that's what I did. And it's beautiful and clean. So, where are we going? How did we get here? <laughs> here we go. Trip planning. Well, first I want to thank Scott. Uh, thanks for the invite. Thanks for doing all the planning. Thanks for doing all the logistics. And even booking our travel back and forth uh, where we were going to stop on that long drive from Edmonton. Um, it is a long drive, but it's, uh, wow, it's pretty stunning and uh, worth doing at some point. I'm sorry, windy. Um, obviously, today was our second day on the road. We had to come in, pick up our permits, uh, which we have to do at certain national parks in Canada, but uh, not at others like, say, Banff and Jasper, where you head straight to the trailhead. And there are some other differences as well that I've had to get my head around because I didn't plan the hike, which is unusual for me. Um, you're putting lots of different name trails together to make a loop or a lollipop or what I'll call on this trip an almost loop or a C where Scott uh, dropped the car off where we're going to finish, brought his keys <laughs> and uh, got a ride back with two amazing people we met from Vancouver uh, who drove him, followed him up and, uh, and brought him back. So we had to do a short day today because the next campsite that we could get to, I mean, this is the other thing about Yellowstone is bookings. It's hard to get the campsite you want. Uh, it's a busy, busy place. Tomorrow's 19K, up Bighorn Trail, up over Bighorn Pass, and down into our next campsite. Now let's talk about day two, our longest day, up over Bighorn Pass on the Bighorn Trail. And uh, we're going to get a good indication of the snow levels at higher elevations. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Bighorn Pass and, of course, Electric Pass, which is the one we're kind of worried about in a, in a, in a couple of three days. That's the pass that 
could still have some snow issues. I mean, we're, we're used to that, but it just depends how much we don't want to post hole or anything like that. So it's Day. And again, we're going to really assess where we are with uh, our pass tomorrow on our longest day and uh, see what we think because it's a little tough to just turn around out here and go back um, when we're at Electric Pass. Let me just flash up the entire uh, trip. Here it is. This is the easiest way I could do it for you is to uh, put these little uh, tracks together on Gaia and show you where we're going each night and show you where the issues are, uh, Bighorn tomorrow and then Electric coming up. And um, well, that's our trip. And I want to thank Scott again for planning this hike. And we do have another one planned here as well. So um, watch for that here on the channel. Anyway, you know what the drill is. Time for supper and a little relaxation and uh, get some rest before a big day tomorrow. Well, supper is hydrating. We got a fire going. Uh, we weren't going to have a fire tonight because if you look out here, I'm going to walk you out here actually. There's some severe weather in the area, not around us, but it is kind of around us and could, you know, come our way at any time. Look at how dark this guy is. Part of my wobbliness, there's rocks everywhere. I'm just trying not to fall, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So, there we are. We're trying to squeeze in supper so that, uh, you know, we can get in the tent and hunker down if we have to. And we started the fire because uh, hikers just came down the trail and about uh, five, 600 meters or yards up the trail that way, a grizzly bear, which is no big deal, what have you, but a campfire can at least kind of alert them that uh, you're in the area, but I'm sure they know that already anyway. So, hey, listen, it was a good and easy day one, but tomorrow she's gonna be long. So uh, 19K uphill for a good chunk of it, although not too bad from a grade perspective. And then uh, down the other side over Bighorn Pass. So excited to be here in Yellowstone, excited to be here with Scott, who uh, just did all that amazing planning. So we've had a great day one. We're going to enjoy this enormous fire, <laughs> which is just all of a sudden taken off. And I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. As you can tell I'm squinting here on day two because it's sunny. Let's just pan over here a little bit. You can see our tents and what you can't see is how much condensation there is in and out. Even some frost. Oh, and there's my long shadow. Hang on. Hello. <laughs> Got my sleeping bag over there because she's a little wet. This morning, we're heading up that way. Oh yeah, the iPhone always uh, wants to focus on my finger. Anyway, we're heading up that way to Bighorn Pass and uh, should be a great day and we're going to find out what the rest of this hike may uh, hold for us with uh, the snow levels because we're pretty high right now. I think we're, we're in this probably 7,000 foot range as we where we sit and we've got some climbing to do so we'll see what's going on but uh, also an interesting morning there have been some well, a helicopter and an airplane and the airplane circled around low just over there for quite a while so we're not sure what they were doing. And they were trying to wake up the uh, the animals for us, so we get a good show this morning on what is probably the most animal-filled trail, according to Tom Bohannon in his guidebook, which is excellent, by the way. I'll talk more about that later. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what they were looking for, so hope everything's all right. Anyway, day two, we're going to have some breakfast and coffee and head to the pass. We are underway. Thank you, 1B1. Heading up to the pass, Bighorn Pass. And we've uh, figured it's probably about 11 and a half K from camp to the pass and I'm going to flash up on the screen in feet but just under we'll say 600 meters of elevation gain over that 11 and a half kilometers not sure how evenly that spread out but <laughs> we're going to find out so before we get there let's see if we can find that grizzly bear or any other animals and we are going up and around that way in an S I just spied something up ahead that I couldn't tell if it was a rock or what it was. Then we've seen it moving. So it's probably that bear that's been in the area. 
And I decided to dress appropriately. What do you think? This scare the bear? Look at this. Oh man. No wonder I'm single. <laughs> All right, Indian Creek. I hope we don't have to go across this. I think we do. I'm zooming in here. It's as far as I can go, but sorry for the shaky video. Anyway, we have to, uh, we definitely have to cross and then cut up that way. So we're actually going to take our boots off, which I don't often do, but it's so early in the day and we have so long to go. I don't want wet boots. Stay tuned. Well, this is my fourth hike of the season. I'm not sure what order videos will come out in, but this is my first four. Sorry, fishies. Ho oh, ho, baby. Good morning. Snow melt. All right, I'm gonna go across here on the Ford cam. <laughs> and then uh, we'll show you Scott. Okay, oh my God. Woo! Oh, what mud. Yeah, there's mud there and some fishes. What's this? Just give him a second to feel that. <laughs> Mud's the worst. Yeah. The reason I leave my boots on typically is for traction, and uh, my water shoes don't really have much, so you do slip and slide, and that's the thing, you know. It's everybody's got their opinion, and I, I, it's okay, whatever you work. One. Yeah, it is a cold one. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm glad I have my shoes. Yeah. All right, we're gonna sit here and. Oh my, my ankles hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cold, man. That reminds me of Molar Creek in Banff. That's how cold that is. <laughs> all right, we're all suited up and ready to go. Now the bear that was right there on that knoll just dropped straight down to the ground. And I'm thinking it probably saw us. <laughs> and we're gonna have to go up there and skirt it. So I'm, we're gonna go up there and we'll make some noise as we get closer, but then we're gonna cut off to the right. But we are, I can see the trail straight ahead of me at my 12 o'clock going way up over the knoll, which would probably put us 50 meters from that bear. Oh, it's going close. It is, isn't it? <laughs> well, this is the trail for the animals. <laughs> Let's go see what we see. sure has been good knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if this video's on YouTube, we're fine, right? If you're watching this now. This is going to be found video no, by this, somebody in three years. Exactly. This is no big deal. And Scott's seen lots of bears in the backcountry. It's no big deal. We know what to do. And uh, But I'm just surprised it dropped straight down like that. I think it's us, actually. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Scott can attest to this one. I originally spotted it. I said, that might be a bison. Then it moved funny. We thought it was digging for something, which it may have been. And we thought, well, maybe it's a bear. But now as we get closer, we're going to get pretty close. That kind of... Whoa! Kind of looks like a... Whoa! Whoa! Okay, that's not... really moving that's, now. No, it's not doing anything. That little more looks like a bison. Well, let's go find out. Mystery solved, it is a bison. We just saw it roll on each of its sides. I don't know what they're doing. Ticks, flies, mud bath. I don't know what it's doing, but... Don't know a lot about bison, to be honest, as you can tell. So... I guess first impressions are... Correct. We're gonna get, I think we're gonna get pretty close here. Oh yeah, his tail's all flicking. You can see him flicking his tail. Yeah, there he is right there. I guess one reason I sort of discounted the bison idea was that uh, I'm not used to seeing him solitary. Like right, exactly, me neither. Interesting. Solitary bull looking right at us. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's why it's alone. Gorgeous animal. Stay over there, buddy. Stay over there. We always say look behind. Look at that. We've cleared the buffalo. Let me just pan around on the top of a little rise here. I'll show you where we're going. We're going up through that gap on the left. And then around that way. That one there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fastest I've ever seen you move. There he goes. Wow. I don't think I can move that fast. <laughs> All right. Here we go.
Hello, Daisy. I'm Stuart. Whoa. <laughs> Love, love Indian Creek. A little false summit here for us. We're gonna go down a little bit and then make a big right turn and see if we're getting through the snow. We're optimistic. Almost to the pass. Snow covering the trail, no big deal at the moment. We still have to get down the other side. So let's see what that looks like. The pass is just up there. Well, there's the problem. And the other side could be worse and it's much steeper. I'm gonna come around here and show you what I've been dealing with. Scott's just taking a little break down there. I come up ahead to scout. I mean, most of these bowls and, and uh, faces you can skirt around, but that one there, I'm going to have to go up the snow. Now, getting up the snow, not so bad. This snow's not, it's pretty firm. If you know what you're doing, you can probably get up. Getting down, however, that's a whole different ball game. As you know, if you've done anything like this before. So, oh boy. All right, Scott and I are going to attempt to see how firm the snow is. There's also an option to go over there. The idea now is to try to get up to the to the pass safely and get a feel for the other side. If we can get to camp tonight, we do have a couple of options to perhaps exit a different way. So but we really won't know anything until we get up there and avoid the cornice, obviously. show you the direction we hope we're going in. Oh, where's Scott? Hasn't made it up yet. We have a big gap between us on purpose in case somebody fell. Now, we didn't bring our micro spikes and they would have been pretty useless in that anyway, I would think. So you dig your toes in as hard as you can. I followed some people tracks. There have been people up here already. I followed some moose tracks. The snow is actually in pretty good shape. Down here to the right. As you can see, no problem. Below elevation. But when Scott gets up here, what's the other side of this look like from a snow perspective? I have to say, looking at it right now, I'm thinking not too bad. My electric pass? I don't know. I don't know. Because the other side of electric pass is longer and steeper on the same side of the range as what I just climbed up. Literally could have had a nap right there. So uh, we're off. We still have some work to do, actually. Downhill, seven plus kilometers. I'll flash up what that is in miles. I mean, it's downhill, but still, legs gotta move. So we better move it, move it. I like to. <laughs> a little bit of lingering snow, no big deal. But have a look at that valley, heading down there. A bit to the left for our uh, our camp tonight. My goodness, what a place! Lots of snow covering the trail. Obviously, you know the valley you're following, but always helpful to have a GPS to make sure you're not taking yourself out of line. What I mean by that is, at this point in the day, I don't want to go left and have to come way back right. It's more about that than anything. I mean, I know I know what the only valley we can follow is this one, but now I'm trying to save steps. So always good to have something you can refer to. You know, when a trail, for example, might be covered with something like that, that you're a trail you're not familiar with, and that would certainly be the case for us.
still some work to do for camp, but at least it's downhill for the most part. We are picking though, this trail a bit, quite a bit different than what we've uh, experienced on the other side. I'm gonna say Gallatin River, it could be Gallatin, Gallatin, I don't know, I really apologize. Again, I mispronounce things all the time. Although, you know, when you're in, say, Jasper, I say Brazo, which is how it's pronounced in French, but the local pronunciation is Brazu. So, anyway, the Gallatin River, you know where I mean. We're descending toward it where we're gonna take a break, get a little water. Um, yeah, we're tired, no question about it. That was a little tough today, especially at the very end. So camp will be wonderful. Hey, Karen. <laughs> well, we know where we're going. Almost to camp. And uh, we were just discussing how our pace has picked up because this looks like home. <laughs> well, the trail feels like home. We've hiked a lot of these trails in our national parks, so very, very similar. Well, let's zoom in and say hi to you. Hello there, big boy. WB6, and we are ready. Oh, look up. There's Bear Pole. And we're going to go into camp. Once we're set up and we know where everything is, well, obviously, we'll show you around. Whoops. Yep, oh, there's the fire pit. Good stuff, we're, we're ready. A little shot around camp as promised. We've each had a long rest after a long day and set up out here under some safe trees in the meadow. Why did we do that? Well, it says capacity here I think is 10, if you could bring a party of 10 out here. So where would you go? You'd have to be in the meadow. So, back here, eating area. We also, of course, wanted to be away from our food, which is all prepped and ready to go. Scott's getting his dinner ready, as am I. The bugs are legendary. But hey, you know what? You gotta expect that out here, right? Seriously. Um, just slather yourself with your choice of bug repellent. I like DEET out here in these places, but to each his own. Water source is very clean and nice right here. You can pick it up anywhere down there with some fast moving and deep uh, water. So we're gonna have some supper and ponder things because we, I couldn't really show you what, oh yeah, this is for the bugs. I couldn't really show you what I did today, what Scott did today, climbing straight up where there are normally switchbacks in um, kind of gravelly spring snow. The footing was good, but I wouldn't want to come down that. It wasn't scary. It wasn't scary, no. But you know what? In a couple of days, electric pass, we have to come down the steepest side of it which I believe faces generally in the same direction as where we saw the cornices in the snow today. So we're gonna take some time tonight and look at the maps. We don't have a lot of bail options, actually, where we are. Uh, if we continue on, we put ourselves in even deeper, unless we bail out on road 190, I think it's Gallatin Road, and then we have to go down to West Yellowstone and then find our way back up to where the car is. So that could be epic hitchhiking <laughs> or shuttling. Of course, the other option is to turn around and go back out tomorrow um, because of, well, I mean, we'll ponder the snow levels and stuff. There's a, a third option, which is to go up over uh, Fawn Pass, but Fawn Pass is about, uh, about the same height as what we did today, and it's oriented different. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what the snow levels were like there. Always different every season when you're out early, and always important to manage your own risks. So we're going to do that with supper. I'll wrap it up in a minute. Well, that's a wrap on day two. I'm in the tent. Scott's hanging his uh, his food, and uh, I'm going to stretch my legs because <laughs> my hamstrings are killing me. Uh, tomorrow, WC2. I think it's called Lower Fan Creek. That is our target. That said, uh, we are looking at the maps all night, and uh, Electric Pass looks like the side that we'd need to descend steeply could be very similar to what we came up today uh, to Bighorn Pass. So bunch of options that we have to consider and we've even asked our well my good friend Ann uh, who I'll be hiking with this summer and Scott will also be hiking with this summer Ann and Jim we've asked Ann over Garmin to see if she can book us a campsite so we could take an alternate route kind of back to the car <laughs> if not we've got a few options that include backtracking and also hitchhiking so um, we're going to sleep on it and see what transpires between now and the morning so, uh, but what a day. 
I don't think I've ever climbed up snow uh, like that before, straight up the hill. And it was, uh, the view was just spectacular. This is a stunning place and a place I need to explore a whole lot more. It's just wild and amazing and you get the campsites to yourself when you book them, which is why it's hard to put a trip together. And uh, that's why it's hard to make changes when you're, you know, kind of in a situation where you don't think you can get down a pass because of the snow levels at 10,000 feet. So anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to get some rest and I'll see you in the morning, which will be about five seconds from now for you. Morning, day three, and it's a bluebird at least for now. Always in the afternoons, the clouds seem to roll in and uh, we get a little spitting rain, but it also takes the heat away. Scott's over there packing up, sun's coming down and I'm gonna dry off my tent. Not too much condensation this morning, but the foot box in my sleeping bag is wet as usual. Uh, Scott's over there, of course. I think I showed you that what will be five seconds in your time. <laughs> Still a lot of snow and that's the theme of the day. So. My good friend Anne went online last night uh, with her new Starlink on her, uh, I'm going to call it Yellowstone Ranch, but it's, uh, it's up in Canada. <laughs> That's for you, Anne. Uh, and um, we're going to try Fawn, uh, Fawn Pass today. And if we can get over Fawn Pass, then there are four campsites uh, on the other end, two horse, two hiker, all empty, but they're all walk-in. So uh, well, the hiker ones in particular are walk-in and nobody has booked them as of last night. Last thing you want to do is, you know, take somebody's permit or, you know, be there. But the park office did say, you know, go ahead in this situation. You can't get over electric. Uh, go ahead and, and, and give it your best shot. So that's what we're going to do. Plan B would be to go to the campsite we're supposed to go to tonight, which we could do after seeing the pass. And then it's 5K out to 190 tomorrow. And then we'd have to hitchhike maybe down to West Yellowstone and then up around toward Mammoth to the car. So we have options. The first option is fawn pass and uh, once we get packed up we're gonna head that way should be about 11k to the pass and we'll know whether we can get over it or not and uh well you'll find out too off we go where we'll stop nobody knows <laughs> not even us want to take your boots off for that <laughs> I think I kind of want to wash them. Pretty happy about some of these little sort of bridges this morning because it's wet through here. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to make time on a long day, which this is going to be either way, and you're not wanting to get your feet wet first thing in the morning, that can slow you down, so that's good. As we always say, sometimes turn around and look behind. I'll give you a daisy a day, dear. Look at this, eh? <laughs> wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. We've seen a lot more foot traffic this morning. Uh, these campsites are accessible. Uh, our campsite is about 10K from the car if you were parked here at this uh, trailhead so that flash up of course always in miles what that is but there's a sign up here and uh, we're going to make a sharp right and go over and connect with the fawn pass trail i think it's 0.9 miles uh, according to the map i'm looking at the nat geo stuff and uh so that's you know a kilometer and a half basically half of that at least will be uphill let's have a look at this sign yeah, I hope you can see it. Bighorn Pass Trailhead. Yeah. 6.6K, 4.1 miles. And if I zoom around here, there's our fork. We're going that way. We just had a nice break in the shade. Picked up a little breeze, which was nice because it's hot. Here's our trail intersection. Fawn Pass Trail. Fawn Pass, five miles. Oh. And, uh, well, that's all we're worried about. There we go. Hope you can read that. It's very sunny. I'll get in a little closer. And yes, the sign is crooked. 
That's in our rear view mirror. Looking down the valley, Scott thinks, and I agree, that we camped right down there. Right down the boat there. Sorry for the shaky video. There it is. And look where we are now. <laughs> I saw this from our camp. I thought, I bet we could hike up there. Yeah, we could have come straight up the ridge. Yeah, I just thought, well, well yeah. we don't have time for that. I haven't shown you much because we've been through a lot of fire burn. Old, old, of course. Weather moving in. Typical here every afternoon. There's been some thunder and lightning, and it's been very, very frightening. Eek. But I've yet to see Galileo. Maybe he's up here. I'm huffing and puffing. This will be a long day for us. That's life. Hey, look at that view though, right? <laughs> Finally opening up a bit. It's been well, it's been mostly like that all the way up. So I haven't shown you much because, well, we've been huffing and puffing, but, you know, honestly, not a lot to see. Oh, look, we were over that way yesterday. And the elusive Fawn Pass up there. Whew. Be gentle to me, Fawn. Please be prepared for a lot of this. It's the nature of fires. And the snags. Hard to keep up if you're in the park, but there's a lot of this. Wow, that used to be the trail. That's not deadfall, it's rockfall. Weird things happen when trees burn and there's nothing to hold the soil in place. Look at that. Wow. Big one. Here it is, Fawn Pass. Yeah. 9120, so 10 feet higher than Bighorn. And by the way, not five miles. All right, we're just gonna take a couple pictures and then head down toward the cabin, tank up with some water, and uh, well, we still have some work to do. We've turned the corner, still some snow. This is the side that caused us trouble coming up Bighorn Pass, so. This looks pretty good, might be wet, but certainly passable. You gotta read those contour lines and that's when we started looking real close at electric after seeing what we saw at Bighorn. We knew that that was not something we wanted to do. And I, I think I already mentioned this, but here's why. We would have had to turn back with one day of food, basically in our packs. And uh, just look at that as I walk, nice, eh? Yeah, so we thought, that's a little risky. We've got time, so off we go. Cool meandering of this Fawn Creek. That neat. Beautiful. What's not beautiful? The sky. Now well, we've had to gear up for the rain. <laughs> yes, I have the usual on. We are pretty close to being out of the bear management area and near the campsites. And uh, this, and she's moving pretty good. Oh boy, time for some wet boots. I got my feet wet a bit because the water went over the top of my boots. <coughs> Pardon me. But uh, Scott's opted to change his shoes. I don't blame him, it's late in the day. I plan to put on new uh, socks tonight and I didn't get my feet very wet. So I think the boots will be fine by the morning. And we've got a short hike out tomorrow to the car and then we're off 
to some sort of maybe RV campground or something where everything will get washed and dried and all that sort of stuff. So I made a calculated decision to leave my boots on. Plus, the rocks were very slippery. So I'm kind of glad I did. Scott's water shoes do have great treads, though, and mine do not. So big difference. But anyway, let's see what happens. So the first campsite is going to be a little spur trail bound back toward Fawn Creek. And uh, if there's nobody there, we're going to well, at least eat supper and kill some time. As I've mentioned a few times, my good friend Ann got a hold of the park. I can't book these. They're walk-in, which is great. We took advantage of that for this trip, actually, on a campsite we wanted at the end, which we don't need now. Um, yeah, so... But, this is the furthest from the trailhead. It's a Monday. I mean, unless somebody's putting a big... Oops, sorry. I had to get a mosquito. Unless somebody's putting a big trip together, then it doesn't make a lot of sense. I have two. It's a spur trail that goes down by the river. Oh, the sort of trail I got there. There it is. Yeah. Little tiny trail to follow. Let's go see what's going on. Oh, this be... Yeah, this will be Bear Central here when these come into bloom. Look at that. Strawberry fields forever. There's a fire pit. I guess you'd have to stand. <laughs> well, that's one fire pit. Let's see what else is going on. Bear pool up there. Nice little spot here. And your water source is over there. That's the river, isn't the creek? Yeah, that's uh, Fallen Creek. Wow. All right. Well, we're gonna figure out what to do. And uh, when we know, you'll know. Okay, there's four campsites in very close proximity to one another. Hey-oh! <laughs> hey one F1. Uh, that last campsite was, whoa, wow. It reminds me of Bing on the North Boundary. Dismal, although, hey, we'll take it. Uh, we're gonna check out this horse camp, just for the heck of it because all four were the ones we asked about last night, given our, you know, we're not getting over electric pass, so let's go see what this one looks like. Well, Scott's over there hydrating his happy yak, what is it, spaghetti? Neapolitan spaghetti. Neapolitan spaghetti. And I'm here with my little concoction of stovetop stuffing, mashed potatoes, uh, dehydrated corn, and dehydrated chicken. Mmm, yummy, yummy. We've decided to, uh, We've decided to stay here at the horse camp, which looks like, if I just swing this around, hasn't been a horse here in a very long time. Look, the fire pit, sad. There are bear boxes, though. We're really happy about that. And they work, because we can just throw our stuff in there. And then we're going to hike up into the stand of trees up here and shelter ourselves from the weather and find a couple of level spots to tuck in. So that's really all there is to show you. We're going to have supper and set up our tents and uh get into bed it's uh, what is it 7 30 yeah and it's cold and raining so all right we'll see you there in a second 23.8 kilometers says my garmin 24 says scott's gaia gps on my iphone 23.17 which is quite a discrepancy i'm going to have to look into either way a very long day after yesterday so we're looking forward to tomorrow which is about 8k to the trailhead where the car is uh, we're a couple of nights short of the planned itinerary, but I really think we made the absolute right call not to try that pass. Um, the side of it that would have snow is, I mean, if you look at the relief lines on the map, wicked steep, like almost like a wall. <laughs> so uh, that was, yeah, we, it's just the snowpack, and that's what you do. You make smart decisions. So tomorrow, 8K to the car, right off the bat, within the first kilometer, um, Two river fords, and uh, they're not going to be bridged, I don't think. The funny thing is, there's another river ford kind of close to the trailhead, uh, where the car is, and since it's so close to the trailhead, I wonder if there's a bridge. Yeah, it could be two, maybe three river fords over eight kilometers, so we'll see what happens in the morning. But uh, certainly starting the day off, I would think, with water shoes. So that's it. We uh, It's 8.40 uh, p.m. We're in our tents. We are exhausted a couple of you know long and uh hard days and uh, but we're happy to be here and sleeping and uh you know on to the next adventure right so i'm going to say good night and we'll see you in the morning
Which for you, you know the drill, five seconds. Good morning. Made it to our day four. And as I said, five seconds ago for you, 8K out. View of our meadow, little view of uh, our tents, all pitched up here under this canopy. But boy, what a night. Slept really well, but before I could get to sleep, I had to listen to everything low on the food chain freaking out. <laughs> You've probably heard this in camp when birds start getting really aggressive and angry and every chipmunk and squirrels go warning the other one. So something was circling around the general vicinity because it would be over here at one point, then over there, then there, then there. And, uh, you know, it died down, of course, as it always does. And, and then I died down. I went to sleep. Do I, I look sleepy? I'm a little tired. Two big days. And, uh, well, today, 8K to the trailhead and a couple of river fords at least. And then the car and some laundry and a shower. So a little coffee and a little breakfast and off we go. Well, we're underway. Nice leisurely morning. We're in no hurry. And uh, we're going to cut through this meadow, intersect the trail. This meadow will be about the same as the one we walked through to get into the horse camp last night. So this will uh, cut off a little, little few steps for us. Sun feels good. Starting to peek through. And let's go see uh, if we can rock hop these. That's our idea now. Boots are on. We're optimistic. So uh, my left foot got wet. We came over to a game seems to game seemed to cross there. As I've said before, a lot of times where they put these fords, it's for the horses, not for you. So we walked around a bit. We really didn't want to take off our boots. Still dry. Yeah, I've got one wet boot and one dry boot. Onward. Second to three Fords. Anything better than no, probably not. Look at that view. Scott and I are just wondering where we're going when we're going that way. But there's traffic down there. Back to civilization. What do you think? <laughs> no, thanks. Look at that vista. We're going to stop here for a short break so I can uh, drain one of my boots. What a place to stop. Stop for a break, I got my crazy hat on. <laughs> it's bright. You have to watch yourself in the sun. Look at that vista behind me. I mean, let me just rotate this a bit for you as I sit here and dry my feet off. Look, look at that. That's something. Yeah, that is something. I mean, most people don't get out here. They see the parks from the roads. And I mean, I guess that's great. And you should do it. If that's all you can do, you need to do it because you need to connect with nature. Get out of that concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Because really, dreams might be made there, but this is where you find, well, truth. And I'm not just being weird, I'm telling you the truth. This is where you find, uh, <laughs> that's better. This is where you find everything. It's remarkable. So just have a look at that. I'll get out of the way. Look at that. You can only see it if you walk in. And it's spectacular. That was a nice break. We've seen where we're going down along that ridge. Well, to this side of it, of course, up to the trailhead. What a stunning place for a break. Wrung my socks out. One of my gators lost the bottom strap on the West Coast Trail. I still have the strap and there's no damage, but I can't get it back on the rivet. And that's the boot that leaked the most. Interesting. Now, next clip you're about to see, there's a horse party coming up. And that is great to see. I'll show you that in a sec. Where do you ride to? Just to the top up here, so we'll probably catch y'all on the way back down again. Oh, we're faster than that. Come <laughs> on. Give <laughs> us some credit. We got you beat on that one. <laughs> Give us some credit. How, how far did you guys go? We went through Bighorn Pass and around. Okay, then I will give you a lot of credit. <laughs> This is Glen Creek. And 
Scott pointed out, that's what the intersection is named after. Or the, uh, sorry, the trailhead. I have intersection on my brain because it's right up here. We've got to make a really sharp right. I'll show you that in a second. Well, for us, we've backtracked. We're going to cut that way in a sec. But here's the sign. Let me flash up on the screen now the intersection we're at. Here it is. We would have come out from the left if we'd been able to do electric. You're not going to be able to read this, I don't think, because, well, it's kind of etched in. So let me just come across, Scott, this side real quick. I hope you can see that. Snow Pass Junction. And we're heading uh, 3.4 kilometers or 2.1 miles down to the Glen Creek Trailhead. Ooh. Always look back. We would have come from up there had we done electric, which we will save for another time when it's later in the summer. And just a little more work to do down around there. Probably a kilometer and a half at this point. I'm just commenting on how beautiful that is with the flowers, the sage. Wow. That's something, look. Contrast. Steps from the road. Come on in. Almost all down the hill, we got a terrific view. Yep, what a day. All right, we're going to wrap it up from right here. Well, the first thing I want to do is thank Scott for uh, all the planning, all the logistics, food. I mean, <laughs> This is his trip and he planned everything and I'm just so grateful that you included me. So thank you very much. Oh, I'm glad you could come, it's been good. Oh, it has. We're not even finished. Well, we're not finished. With <laughs> more to come from Yellowstone, but um, wasn't quite the trip you planned. No, I think we found there was a little too much snow. Yeah, a little too a little much too snow. Much. That said, how's the hike? It was great and the last day was really a tops. Oh. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I loved, uh, what was it, Bighorn Pass when we get up and yeah, look back. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Here's a picture. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course today you saw just a few, oh, few sorry, a few minutes ago, uh, just that was a surprise after what we did on Fawn Pass Trail. Well, yeah, coming across that knoll, like man, boom! This is what it was for. <laughs> yeah, and to meet the horse folks, we just talked to to uh, one of the ladies, two ladies running their own horse packing company. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what were they called? Yellowstone. Oh, uh, Yellowstone Adventures or something I, like I'm going to flash it up here. Yeah, I, I wrote it down. So uh, anyway, listen, thank you for watching. As always, questions, comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time. You bet.